This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Made a turtle out of all the stuff. <laughs> what? You better start oh, this thing. Welcome now. to the show. It is Bobby of J Town. He's making arson crafts over there uh, in Johnstown. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. This is Wrestling Mayhem Show. Six hundred, six hundred and twenty-four. I'm on Facebook now. What the hell do you have me involved? Six hundred and twenty-four Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling and occasionally. Puppets, thanks to Bobby F. J. Town, mm-hmm. right here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We got the crew here. We got Larry. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> that is a visual for, I'm sorry, audio people. It was a turtle puppet with an Oscar mask for the shell. And that is pro wrestling for this week in a nutshell. That's what I learned this week. Yeah. I can yeah. do that. We're doing we're doing the episode backwards. That's how I'm, we're doing this. I'm the I'm the offsuit Dark Ford Studios. <laughs> Oh well, there my you go. God. There you go. You can collaborate with Larry here <laughs> at darkforgestudios.co. Uh, nice segue. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? You want your name associated with that? I can't. If it gets views, sure. Uh, there you go. Hey, yeah, it's all about the views. That's right. As we said, Bobby FJ down out there, puppets in tow. I promise I'll behave today. <laughs> Don't make out with that mask while the turtles oh, talking oh though. no that gets real weird <laughs> real uh, yeah. weird i don't want to make chris sick like I also, did last time. <laughs> too late <laughs> also with us of course uh our friend with the, with the future endeavor letter from the wwe the only one of us with one of those up in poo kipsy new york it's mad mike you are you okay over there you don't you don't look no. well <laughs> no I, i've been sitting on this ever since i saw bobby's little puppet thing um right, so for mayhem mania I am going to keep this in my brain. Um, Antonio Garza, if you are still going to be doing the graphics for us, you need to take a screenshot of Bobby putting the mask on his turtle puppet because one of my tag team matches for Mayhem Mania will be Asuka and Rezar because <laughs> they're babies. <laughs> they're babies. <laughs> babies fighting babies last night on Raw. Yes. There you go. There you go. Um, anyways, that broke my brain a little bit. That just <laughs> they found their way out of the library, though. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. Also, <laughs> with us is the current IWC tag team champion, Chris LaRusso, back with us in the studio with belt in tow. Look Absolutely. at that. Look at that thing. Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful if, belt. If, if if you win a title, I mean that's that's why you that's why you win a title so you can take it to media appearances so <laughs> mm-hmm. that you can show it off so that you can get you know, out of parking tickets so that you can prove just how because of this this lovely belt how you're so much better than everyone else. Do you wear you know, it? Do you have do you have a belt sorg? I do you, well, you don't have one with you, no, so you I so don't. no. I have a no. kendo stick. No, I have a kabuki that, stick over there. No. I mean is that okay? No. Is that something? No. no. I, I guarantee you this is heavier. Oh, probably. If I hit you in probably. the head with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are deceptively heavy. Yes. I mean they uh, you <laughs> Like it, it's weird because it's like this matte finish to it, so you you like it looks like it was like is this leather or this like pleather or something? Yeah, and you're no. like, no, it's a straight up metal piece. For those that wondered, you should be using that in your matches way more often. I won it. I I I I've won it yeah. the last IWC show. Okay, well the next one, if you don't hit somebody with that, I'm gonna be very disappointed. In well, you. yeah, I mean, you, you see who we're going against. I mean, I plan to. Okay. Uh, I mean, there you th- go. Th- there's. You, you, I, I think uh, Chris is the shortest one in the match. I by a yes, absolutely. That'll I, bring people down to his height, though. No. <laughs> Now, I, I, as I'm looking around, when you, it's like Wardlow, Titan, Duke, 
Gannon. And yeah, you should definitely use yeah, that. Yeah, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I think I'm taller than Palace. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, well I, maybe Palace... with, with, with his hair tied. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I've okay, seen... yeah, you know what? The hair probably gives him a good That's shirt. true. Yeah. Well, I've seen Palace wear it under his clothes um, in a Dunkin' Donuts. Where what? What, the, the IWC heavyweight title? Yes. <laughs> Wait. How have you seen him wear it under his clothes? Because, because <laughs> <laughs> can we get to the first topic before this goes way off the rails? Oh, no, we're going to do plugs first. Thank you, everybody, okay. for joining us. Uh, we're here, of course, every Tuesday night around about uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page, where you it's can see this and other conversations. Hey, we're live and we're talking at that point. And that's the stuff we record for Gold Bowl. We'll get to that. And sometimes we're watching chippy wrestlers. Uh, that's a thing that happens. Uh, but, of course, you can check us out at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com where you can find this and other fantastic podcasts you can also hit us up at the email address good times, good times. Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com you can hit us on the hotline 412-206-WMS0 uh, just like our good friend Daniel Tiger hit us up this week we'll be ta- uh, sharing that later in the show at Mayhem Show on Twitter Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where we have a lot of great dis- uh, discussions including a very interesting and explicit Bailey shirt that just popped up <laughs> tonight oh thanks my. to Mainstream Matt uh, and, and of course we're here like I said every Tuesday on the Facebook page you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts Stitcher Speaker iHeartRadio, and the Google Music Podcasts, and wherever fine podcasts are found. If you are not finding our podcasts, what other fine podcasts are, podcasts? Yes. Um, You can hit us up at those email addresses, and uh, we'll, uh, of course, make sure it gets there as well. Um, And also video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page for Wrestling Man Show. Um, Thank you to our streaming partner, the405media.com. We're over there every, every evening. 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern, so you can fall asleep, asleep to the sounds of me- mayhem and apparently puppets tonight. Um, and also, yeah. thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, this week, or this month, oh no, it's, 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 I can't grab it. It's out of my reach. But there we have, imagine I'm holding the Blockers uh, movie poster featuring John Cena. We will be uh, giving that away again in another Patreon rumble. That we'll stream live on Twitch here at the beginning of the month. So stay tuned for a uh, time where that's going to be going on. You can cheer on your wrestler, a randomized uh, AI-driven adventure. Um, Those include for this month, uh, our friends at the fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Wow, that was there. That was there. Uh, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. At the Pocky Club $5 level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, and winner of last uh, last uh, month's Patreon Rumble uh, is Heel Bradley, Chris LaRusso's favorite fan. Boo. And Doc <laughs> Remedy. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. Again, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Please help keep the lights on and get some extras in there as well so let's get into the show uh there's a lot of first of all I, we have to bring up we talked about it a, a, a extensively on raw wrap up but i gotta bring it up for this crew um i am enjoying the bugs bunny cartoon that is braun Strowman and kevin <laughs> owens last night <laughs> um just just between between um the running and the uh, Kevin Owens not noticing the car flipped or large gentleman as he was getting the valet um, at the top of the ramp. I didn't which, realize they did valet service for most major arenas. Was, like, now, yeah. we had somebody, our friend Alex Miller out there says that's exactly because we're like, well, that's weird that they put the, the they set yeah. up the valet system there. There's like, yeah. no, that's actually how they do it for the hockey games. So that huh. is that is a legitimate placement. Yeah, that still seems a little. It, it does. Was, that was oddly convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, a little bit of but, place. Yeah, go ahead. My only problem with that is we didn't see the car flip. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I mean, for all we know, he actually picked the car up over his head. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He spun but, it like Cesaro. But like that, that's that's one of the most fun parts of Braun Strowman is getting to see him do crazy things. Yeah, but you know it, what? We've seen it, it before. We've seen it's it like, before. I don't think we have to great. again. It's, yes, we you know, do. Yeah. yeah, you know, yes, when a car do. gets flipped over, that gets boring after a while. Uh, so. to, make a, <laughs> to make a Seinfeld reference, you don't yada yada the sex. Like, 
You don't skip over the best part. No, no, no. Leave the silence. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, your point is well taken. I just was, I, I wasn't sure that was the uh, Seinfeld reference you were going to go for. But yeah. If, if, <laughs> Dolores! If you're, if you, no. but yeah, if, if there is going to be a car flipped over, if something's going to explode and be on fire, which I'm not even sure the car, was the car on fire? No, or no, they, it was smoking. Oh, it, it was smoking and, and they then, came up with this. And then they came up with the fire extinguishers I, I as that was it was the, revealed. I, I thought that was the fire extinguishers <laughs> that caused the smoke. No, it, not initially. Uh, it, fire, actually, I, have, I think initially, yes, that or a dry ice or something. Uh-huh. And then there was more <laughs> with it because it didn't look distinctively different when that was, they started blowing the, 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 the fire extinguishers on it. That um, was fast action by the volunteer fire company slash security yeah, slash independent yeah. wrestlers. That was in attendance <laughs> slash indie wrestlers. Yes. Oh boy, uh, that that's that's a high point. We had we had we had great comedy and great wrestling last night on the show. <laughs> and uh, Chris, I didn't know if you wanted to bring this up on the show, but you're talking. We we're talking about kind of like bad finishes the matches. Oh, oh yeah. And well, I thought that I was, was a good conversation if well, you wanted to bring it up here. Okay, I, I, I don't know if you want to talk more about Raw, but I was, you know, I really enjoyed uh, Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Um, I thought that they, they had a fantastic match, probably one of the better ones I've seen on TV, you mm-hmm. know, on free TV for a while. Um, I thought that, you know, everything's going awesome. The crowd's biting. They're, they're, they're really into it. And it ends with, you know, run in for, to, to save the title. And I'm just like, that finish always just, you know, I was like, ah, I, I, I won't say, I mean, the match was still fantastic, mm-hmm. but uh, among the, you know, uh, let down moments, I think that that, uh, that wrap up is always such a let down, you know? Yeah. And, and especially and, when it closes the show. Yeah. I, the only, it- the only finish I hate more than that is the disqualified for kicking too much ass. <laughs> the, um, this was a conversation we had last night, too. Yeah, that, Because it was more around Bailey uh, needs to go for anger management because she mm-hmm. kicks too much ass. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like, well, I mean, so I so you were, you, were, you were doing too well? You were doing your job so well that they had to stop you from doing your job? I mean, like, it just seems... I, I've always it, found it that... It was getting too real. Oh, darn. Yeah, I mean, but I, I just uh, yeah, that that one always infuriates me. The um, he had the title one. That one always infuriates me, and uh, it, it, it didn't take away from my overall enjoyment of the match. I still think it was one of the best things, uh, definitely the best thing on the show, and 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 one of the best things I've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's just like it, it it was it was a tad you know uh, the the. The run in at that point just seemed kind of like, okay, forgive me, I'm about to go on a tangent. So let, let, let us compare a great match to, to great sex, okay? And it's going so well, and everyone's enjoying themselves, and the energy's rising, and everything's gonna, and it just, when it reaches that, you know, it, it would be like, it would be like if Bobby F. from J-Town just came through the wall like the Kool-Aid man right at the moment that everything was going well. And it just <laughs> destroys. Not, not that hasn't happened before. <laughs> you just, just get de- sla- slapped in the face <laughs> of the turtle puppet. <laughs> <laughs> the turtle that, puppet. That's what that, you know, that was one, two, turtle puppet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, look at that face. Wouldn't that, that would, you know. So Sorg's wrecked, and we're not even ten minutes in Wasn't yet. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's also ruined. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like you're 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 ruining fictional sex right now, yeah. Bobby. Like <laughs> hypothetical but sex is now ruined. <laughs> oh my! And along with that, I think it's appropriate. Brad saying, Bradley saying, uh, you can't always have a clean finish. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate a good screw job. Um, yeah, yeah. That, I did not read that in the right order. Uh, no, I think you did. No? I think you did. Yeah. Uh, is it? Is, Matt Carlin says, uh, "Is it worse than the distracted by entrance finish?" No, distracted by entrance music is is a uh, you know that that one always like. Again, would you stop? the you know great love making because you heard a song out in the hallway that you know hold on hold on hold on i hate this song depends on the song i'm gonna say depends on the song 
<laughs> because if I'm having sex and suddenly I hear, <laughs> I'm going to stop having sex. What I do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what I had for music tracks, Bobby. <laughs> Jeez. I thought that was clear. Okay. All right. All right. Um, a song can totally kill a buzz. I, I, that's all I'm saying. It can. I'm not buzz saying. Buzz can. Yes. Uh, of, what's in the What's in the chat room? Uh, I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I'm trying so hard to follow this up. D- Dillinger going called back, Ellsworth going back to a Bailey one. For a second, though. What? Going back to Bailey. Going okay. back to Bailey. Going back to Bailey. Yeah. Two weeks um, ago. Go ahead. Um, I don't think so. Why did why does she need to go for counseling for something she didn't want to do in the first place? She didn't want to team with Sasha. Mm-hmm. Like, and Sasha didn't want to team with Bailey. This seems like not good optics in terms of the women's evolution. My my thing with that is like, backstage. Well, like, backstage you have um uh, the riot squad going around destroying people's personal property and work property, and they don't have to go to counseling. <laughs> but Bailey has pent up aggression against her best friend who turned her back on her multiple times, and now she has to go to counseling. So, and know. also her friend who cost her a match. I mean, isn't, like, isn't wrestling uh, just full of people that need like anger management? Why like, haven't isn't they that why they're already. in wrestling? Yeah, yeah. This is too long. This has been going on since wrestle since before WrestleMania. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Since For a before. build to extreme rules since NXT. That's kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. I don't know. Uh, um, wait, although it, Tina Tina is saying that on YouTube uh, channel, um, um, Kurt Angle did order Sasha to go to anger management as well. So, but Doctor Shelby, the thing that, uh, oh, why, it's gonna be glass. Oh, I forgot about want, him. This <laughs> isn't this isn't Kane and Daniel Bryan, right? This isn't we're gonna, that. We're gonna have a best of seven. Oh no! And then they're gonna <laughs> end up as tag team champions. Yeah. By the the first ever women's tag team. <laughs> no men, men's tag team. They're just gonna go for it. Yeah, why uh, not? Why not at this point? You know what they need? They need a festival of friendship. <laughs> That's what they oh. need. <laughs> they need a festival of friendship. Like, none of them are like big enough of an we, asshole to do that, though. We yeah, definitely sure. can't have a yeah, Bailey. This is your life. Yeah, Sasha. Could. Sasha's a to- totally big enough asshole that, to do that. True. Sasha yeah. would be able to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's, that's raw. It, it, SmackDown. I think there's some interesting. Speaking of music, apparently, like that's what um, I, I was watching back in like Daniel Bryan coming out in between the ba- the Bludgeon Brothers. Basham Brothers. They're the Basham Brothers. Just call them the Basham Brothers from now on. That's what um, I do. Um, and uh, I, I just thought it funny because it stopped, and they're just like, "Well, play the music. Keep going, Brian." <laughs> It was a uh, kind of interesting, but um, the other interesting thing, well, really interesting. Um, you guys see Charlotte Flair, all of Charlotte Flair this mm-hmm. week. Wow. Um, there, there, cool. there's pictures for the upcoming uh, ESPN body issue, um, and I shared the one where she was doing like kind of a, a version of the uh, uh, figure. Uh, what what did she call it? The figure eight. Figure eight. eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eight. It's crazy. Uh, um, not, not the first wrestler to do the body issue. No. Uh, who was who's the other one? Uh, Sexy Star did the uh, Spanish oh, version. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, for what it is now, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's still a really cool issue. I'm I'm glad they're bringing like WWE people into it too. I'm I'm shocked they haven't they haven't gone with a male wrestler at some point too. Like I don't think The Rock or or anyone like that's ever done it, but and, and they have a lot of different sports represented there. It, it, mm-hmm. It's not just it's not a swimsuit issue or something. It's it, it's it, well, there's no swimsuits. Bad for instance. Mitten. What's that? Not bad. bad is, is badminton in there, Bobby? I, do you pick this up every year, Bobby? It should be. It should be. Should be. Hashtag, hashtag justice for badminton. Chess. <laughs> uh, chess. Table tennis. <laughs> Beer pong. I lie. Oh, uh, Tina's saying Rousey, Rousey did as well. So well, Rousey. Rousey did a couple years ago. Again, rest. <laughs> Jeez, um, I, but it was no, she's uh, doing good. Yeah, that was good, and that was going making the rounds, and and just the the pictures on her Instagram just look look insane. Uh, so good to see. 
Um, what wrestlers would you want to be involved in that? Um, hmm. Like best physiques and everything, because that's kind of what they yeah, highlight. That, that's the that. deal. Like it's they're not like they're not like overly like sexualized pictures. No, it's not a pornographic. Like it's not, no, 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 they're no, not pornographic. Not, by like any I said, not, not a swimsuit edition or anything. It's more just like a art of the body kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I mean, WWE actually kind of has done something like that before, though. Like they'll uh, they don't do it to show off the physiques necessarily. The WBF. But no, no, they've, no, they've they've done bits to to show off like um scars, like scars yeah. and bruises and stuff like that that um that wrestlers have had from matches from matches mm-hmm. and injuries and stuff. And they also had the Superstar Inc. show mm-hmm. where they mm-hmm. shoot like um people's in very specific to highlight their tattoos. Uh, I guess someone like Randy Orton would be good for the body issue. Yeah. Especially after he comes back from an injury. But, but I mean, he, he he's injured again. Yeah. Yet, isn't he? So. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's injured again. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So I wish too hard for him to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Bobby. That's no. my phone. I'm sorry. Yeah, cause... yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, that'll, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. And uh, they said first, you say first time somebody in WWE has been involved because that would be active, active at the time. Active yes. WWE. Yeah. Ronda, of course, while she was still UFC, with UFC, uh, sexy star, not a WWE mm-hmm. person as well. So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, hey, you know what else is pretty cool? Our good friends at Slice on Broadway for a different kind of body issue. Um, <laughs> Uh, this guy. Our, yeah, the, the, for the Bobby FJ Town body issue. Hey, uh, <laughs> Slice on Broadway. Look ever. at that. Zero Definitely. issues sold. There you go. Slice on Broadway.com. If you want to check them out there in the, the uh, all around the Pittsburgh area. If you're here in town, I know you got some of you guys in the chat room from all over. But I know when some of you visit, you make sure to stop by at the Slice on Broadway. And we do appreciate it. They've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. And there are got four locations in the Pittsburgh area. Right up the street is the OG, the original here. And uh, definitely, definitely recommend it. Mad Mike approved. Absolutely. From a New Yorker himself. You can check it out. Especially if you're popping in and checking out a Pirates game because you like the other team. I went to a pizza place today. Okay. That I ordered stromboli with mm-hmm. three ingredients: pepperoni, mushrooms, black olives. They did not include pepperoni in my stromboli. Slice on Broadway will not do that to you. <laughs> I was wondering. What where is this, this a, going? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> carrying on a vendetta because they forgot your pepperoni. Jeez, if they forgot the olives, no, no, you'd no, burn the place thing. down. Like they forgot my pepperoni. Slice on Broadway. They won't forget your pepperoni. <laughs> is the that's new like tagline. That's that is stromboli. <laughs> like it's no, the no. heart of stromboli. How do you forget a core ingredient hard. of stromboli? It's like forgetting I'm, the bread in stromboli. I'm not a vegetarian. Clearly, do I look like it? <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Hit them up, slice, PGH underscore slice, and let, let them know the mayhem sent you. So I, jeez, I need to recover from that one a little bit. Uh, we have an email. Or no, we have a voicemail from Daniel Tiger. I know that's not his real name. That's his real name. That's it's not his driver's in my no, heart, it's Daniel Tiger. In my yep. heart is Daniel Tiger from Nash- Nashville. In my heart and soul. Uh, and he hit up our, our voicemail at 412 wms 0 And he has a question for us for a discussion that I completely have queued up here. Why isn't this working? Come on. Click the thing. You click the thing, and it plays the thing, right? Did you mm-hmm. rewind it? I'm from Tennessee, oh, there it is. Daniel Tyler. Hey. And I Blowing it first, that I'd like to, for all of you guys to answer tonight. You guys get the chance. Yeah. Um, I heard these fans always make this chance. Fight forever. Fight forever. So my question is this. If you would take a rivalry between anybody and they would last forever, who would it be? If you want the entire rivalry to last forever. All right, guys. I just want to know what, what you guys think, and I'll listen to you guys sometime tonight or maybe tomorrow. Thank All right. Tonight. Thanks a lot. And, and he followed up. He said, you know, past, present, future hasn't happened well yet. Like, what is a what is a rivalry you'd like to see? That's one of those, you know, like like Zane and Owens that just that just happen yeah, forever. Like, so if you have the feud that never ends, who would you pick? 
Well, right now, I'm going to say Juice Robinson and Jay White. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so happy that, I found that That's interview. my favorite feud right you now. T- I think you told us on this show last week about the Juice Robinson, like, Bra- punching broken, a chair with a broken, broken hand, hand yeah. and then cutting the greatest promo afterwards. Yeah. Jeez. It was amazing. He, like, he was just like, what, you know, I'm not going to Shooting use bald it. eagles out of his ass. Shooting bald eagles out of how an American needs to have the American title. And it was just. That, did they show that on? No, no. You, you're watching. You're well, if they did, I didn't. If they did, I didn't see it. Okay, I didn't see that. I can't until wait till that gets the Facebook access. Page. Wait oh, till that gets censor the, all. Oh, that censor the hell out of they that. They won't even air it. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't air that. <laughs> but he said there with a broken hand um, that he punched a chair with in the match. Jeez. Yeah. And and uh, oh, who's he taking on? Jay White. Jay, Jay White. White. Yeah. Former, former super indie uh, competitor. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, it was that it was Super Indie that sold me on uh, Jay White because mm-hmm. I like the Ring of Honor shows. I I had seen like the tapings, like it just didn't. I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. But of course, now he's doing great stuff over there in uh, New Japan. So, um, what about you, Chris? Who would you like to see fight forever? Omega and Okada. Yeah. I think I think that I mean we're up to now four. Was it the fourth one? Was Third? the most. Re- I think that was this, this was the one? fourth. I was think it? this last one oh, okay. because they, they had the two, the, they they had the the Tokyo Dome, they had the rematch which went the hour, they had the match at the G one. Does that count though? I think it. I mean, it's it's it was only uh it was only a thirty minute match, mm-hmm. but um I think it counts. And then the most recent, the the two out of three falls, yeah. um, and the thing is is that you if you just go with minutes in the ring. They've had to be Jeez. so creative, and they've had to real, and they and they have. Yeah, they have upped it every single time. There's no, and, there's no repeats in that. Mm-mm. And <laughs> it, if you had to have two guys that just had to wrestle over and over and over, and somehow keep it fresh and entertaining and exciting, I think it would be um, Omega and Okada. So I, I'd say, uh, I, I'd say those two would be the the fight forever feud for me. What about you guys out there in? Uh... Hang out, Lance. Um, I, I mean, if we're going current feuds right now, well, well you can, you can, even if it's something like oh, new. You can do anything you want? Yeah. Okay. Um, because the Quato brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, EC3 and John Cena. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, geez, yes. I just want to see that a thousand times. Yes. I I feel like the the promos alone would be matches mm-hmm. because they're both so good on the mic that like they could, I feel like they could carry a 20 minute segment by themselves just talking. Like I, I, I just want to see them go crazy. Like Cena can bring the best out of anyone and EC3 needs someone like that. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. to elevate them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be good. Well, you Bobby. Uh, I was going to say Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> thing. Um, so I'm probably going to say, I would say Gargano and Ciampa for one. Ooh. Just because it's, they're like, they built their feud so well. Mm-hmm. And I, it's not over yet. <laughs> no. And um, the other one I would say would be a tag team feud, which we get a little bit of. We didn't get a lot of. And then they kind of dissolved the one tag team. But I want to see... Uh, the revival and American Alpha fight forever. <laughs> That'd be good too. Really good. Yeah, That'd be really good. yeah. yeah. American um, Alpha is just so much better as a tag team. I mean, if you want to <laughs> go with some historic feuds, I mean, the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express. I mean, they practically fought for what was it like? That feud went like twenty years. They were still fighting in IWC ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah like were... so I mean, uh, they they've probably come as close to the realistic. Uh, fight forever, but I mean, they somehow kept it fresh and exciting for for decades. But it's also like they're from that area era where you could take it from territory to territory, mm-hmm. right? True, but I mean, they were also you know uh, when they were with um, Crockett, you know they they had to keep it. That was TV. Yeah, so. that was TV, and they had yeah. to keep it fresh. And that's and I mean and and that's the stuff that led to stuff like Skywalkers and mm-hmm. you know with the with the. Um, uh, scaffold match and things like that. So there was a lot of inventive stuff. That, and if, mm. were they involved in war games? 
at one point would, or another. I would, they would have I, to be. How, or how least, could yeah, they? I, mean, I, I don't know if that feud ever escalated to war games. I don't think it did. Or at least got paired in it or was, something. Because it was always horsemen, wasn't it? it? I mean, it's been paired it, in. War games some, almost some always involved men. horsemen. Yeah. I think that, that they've they've paired in some, you know, there, there was definitely been some eight mans and some stuff where it was the horsemen and, you know, like um, Rock and Roll Express and, you know, Dusty and Magnum or, you know, uh, Dusty and, and whoever, you know, the, 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 whoever was uh, the top babies. Uh, at the time, mm-hmm. uh, with the Rock and Roll Express against, you know, whether it was uh, Flair, oh. you know, some combination of the Horsemen and the and the Midnights. There was a War Games with um, with the Rock and Roll and the Midnight. It was uh, Rugged Ryan, Marvin, Dusty Rhodes, and Barry Windham, and the Rock and Roll Express against Midnight Express, Big Bubba Rogers, Arn, and Telly. Big Bubba. Mm-hmm. Was that part of the uh, baseball uh, tour the one summer? I they think did. so. It yeah. sales on Long Island. Hmm. So that so. was probably in the arena when they when they went to all the baseball fields and the the uh, football uh, football fields. Yeah, when they the, the Great American Bash Tour, oh, I believe it, it was. was an, it was an unaired house show match. Yeah, that was an unaired house show match. But was Jesus it? But, but but was it on the uh, Great American Bash Tour? Because I think that tour had a lot of unaired classics. I don't know. know. It was back in 1987. So, so I, would, I would, I would, I mean, I obviously I don't know. I'm quick to the internet um, <laughs> chat room. <laughs> Tina should know. She knows everything. That's right. Hey, she was, I think she was, she was the one dropping that the, uh, they had the scaffold match in mid South. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, geez. There's an encyclopedia out there. Uh, Bradley saying Cena versus punk. Yeah. That was a good, feud. that was a good deal. Yeah, you really know what I'd feud. like to see more of hmm. Lesnar versus Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That match mm-hmm. from Great Balls of I, Fire and the lead up to it was amazing. Um, I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to see a hundred of those matches. Not a hundred of them, but that would no. that that would be a good like that'd be a, something that I'd like to see some time actually invested in. You know what? Um, I'd like to see come back around now. Um, the three way feud, mm-hmm. if you could call it that, with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels. Oh, well, that was because the, they were the, having... the uh, highlight of of TNA. Yeah, uh, they were the... main eventing X division matches mm-hmm. on the pay per views at the time with that. Um, and this when Samoa the... Joe, I believe, wait, Samoa Joe was in the X division. He was a yeah. former X division. Oh, yeah. I believe, oh yeah, I believe it is TNA's only Melter rated five star match: AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and Samoa Joe. I, be- I believe. I it. believe uh, it was it was back when we started the show, and TNA was going to be the God send savior of wrestling because of these rings. guys and in six sided rings. <laughs> and now all those people are world heavyweight WWE, champion, world yeah. heavyweight champion the, or very close to it with, I watched uh, these, oh. Oh, so go ahead, Bobby. I watched these something to wrestle with or something else to wrestle with, with about AJ styles and TNA mm-hmm. today. It, it was very interesting. Like yeah. a lot of, they have more footage from in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had the Claire Lynch stuff. They had oh. a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh. Now, now, is that just WWE going, look, AJ, you could have been doing more of this. <laughs> no, they had good stuff for AJ, okay. too. That's good. A, 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 a reminder of why you signed with us. I'm glad they, they still they have a little bit more than like him coming out on WCW Nitro or Thunder or whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, and, and whatever tag team that was and, you know, random velocity. And match. then he just disappeared for 15 years yeah. until, yeah. and then became world champion in Japan. Wait a minute. What happened? But like, well, <laughs> you can be, you, you, you skip the presidency Lashley. for God's sakes. Like was that you, Mike? You can be like Bobby Lashley where Roman Reigns just jokes that, Oh, you really, you really made an impact. Mm. Yeah, said that last night. Mm. Yeah. Um, also from the chat room, Bradley also says Jack Polygon, Brandon K. For you guys, local here. Uh, yeah. Quit sucking hey, up, brothers. Local, I would uh, knock it off, that. brothers. Look, li- no, hold on, hold on, hold on, brothers. Listen to me right now, okay? I don't, I don't know where, I don't know when, you're, you're but when you least what expect you? it. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, okay. No, there, there's my camera. I don't, right. What are you? That's there's nothing camera. over there. Okay. I'm, no, I'm looking. I'm looking down at the chat room. So. Oh, okay. Okay, Bradley, come here. Get close to your television. Get get close to your computer screen. All right. Look, I don't know where. I don't know when. But one day, something awful 
is going to happen to you. And I am going to be the reason that it happens. And I want you to go to bed tonight thinking about that. I want you to think that every second of your life is a gift from me. And when I am done toying with you, I'm going to take it away. Sweet dreams. All right, back to what we were talking about. Are again. we talking oh, about right. the dude that was dressed as an elf while you were drunk? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. The, the, the fireball sure. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, this is the guy we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is happening. I love that. Those are real sentences that we can say Those of are... things that have happened. Like, that is very surreal, especially since I hardly remember that. The internet and will he... never forget it. No, the internet will never forget it. Um... You need to have more drunk shows. No, we need. We're having no more drunk shows. Why not? <laughs> we're done. I don't. Want, what we had an elf and a fireball, and I threw up on the internet. What more can we do? You I mean, you the can, uh, well, wait, 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 wait. wait hold to that, I say challenge accepted. <laughs> um, did I ever tell the story about how Joe Dombrowski was set on fire once in a in the back seat of a car? I don't think so. Have I ever told the story? Is he still in the chat room? Dombrowski, eh, if he's not, anyway. Joe Dombrowski currently uh, announcing over a ring of water these days. Um, so okay, I'll tell a real quick story. You said about a fireball. Now you yeah. meant, do you mean the liquor or do you mean like actual? No, 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 there no. was, there was, a, they were, okay, because, they were leg wrestling uh, and chest flex were um, threw a fireball at him. Okay, so this, this, I actually, think he almost caught our tree on fire. Th- this, this is, uh, then this ties in because this involved an actual fireball as well. This, oh boy, I don't know how many years ago, a long time ago. Um, it's a show in Cleveland and we're late, of course. And as, as you do when you go to a show as in you Cleveland, do when you go to a show in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's custom, <laughs> uh, facade is driving super hentai is in the passenger seat and the back seat is myself, Joe Dombrowski. And on, uh, his left, the one, the only delicious Jimmy DeMarco. Mm-hmm. So that is the car oh, load. We're weaving through traffic going 90 miles an hour because, you know, Facade's driving. And I see, like, Facade fiddling with something in the, like, in the console. And all of a sudden, this wave of fire comes flying into the backseat of the car. He had taken a little bit of, little bit of flash paper, lit it up. And just toss it over his shoulder as a, as a rib. And it would have been funny and hilarious, except for the fact that Joe Dombrowski was wearing a polyester shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> and, like, he goes up in flames. Like, his shirt is, is now producing flames. So, me and Jimmy DeMarco do the only, you know, heroic thing that we think we can do and begin chopping the shit out of him as hard as we possibly can. <laughs> and, you know, we're hitting him in the face and in the chin. And like, like, but, but, I mean, he's on fire. Like, this needs to be, we need to fix this right now. Um, And then Hentai, who I think was asleep, like, (laughs) just wakes up and Dombrowski's on fire in the back seat and we're hitting him. So I can't even imagine what was going on in his mind. Uh, (laughs) Did he try and join in? No. uh, We got got his shirt extinguished and it didn't, like, burn all, but there's this, like, huge scorch mark down his shirt. And nobody said anything for, like, a minute. And then I think uh, I think it was Demarco who was like, "Dude, did Joe Dombrowski just spontaneously combust in our back seat?" Car <laughs> <laughs> oh. trips, nice. Um, all right, I think there's some more in the chat room. Uh, from uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Athena reminds us that uh, Kurt and Samoa Joe had a feud over the TNA belt. I, I really hope that gets rejuvenated. All the TNA belts. I, oh, it was all the TNA belts at all, one point. All of them because TNA lacked originality and yeah. just put all the belts on two people, even the tag titles. Alex Miller wants uh, um, Jeremiah Crane, Sammy Callahan against Mil Mortez. Ooh. Uh, that that has been really good. I'd go good. Phoenix and Mortez. Phoenix and Mortez would be good too. Hey, you know what? We're gonna get both of those. Well, fuck you, assholes. Have already seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice step forward. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, Omega and Y two J. Nido and Y two J. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that match was amazing. I want to win HBK and Y two J. Also good. Also, also good. very, very good. Jeez. 
Um, Oscar versus Ellsworth. No, no. Oh, this is next week. It'll be Oscar versus Ellsworth. No, that's 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 your, that's SmackDown. That's that, that was not this question. Sorry about no. that. No. So, uh, thank you, Daniel. I think I think that was a fun question to that kind of uh, uh work around there. Uh, not our big question this week. We do have another one there for that. And um, oh, I don't already Oscar kind of asked that. Nikki didn't I? Cross. What's that? Oscar versus Nikki Cross. Oscar versus Nikki Cross. Really? We, we, have we, yes. we haven't seen a lot of that, have we? Oh, there, the one they match they did have was, was pretty good. Amazing. Hmm. Nikki Cross versus anyone is really good. Mm-hmm. Though. I was hoping she'd come out for the uh, Jeff Hardy challenge tonight on SmackDown. <laughs> Um, I was okay with all of the the Joe um, Nakamura and Finn stuff when that was going yeah. down too. Like those, I, I feel like those would be good if rejuvenated uh, on the main roster as well. So, okay. Uh, well, with that, if you guys are looking for some great advertising options, won't break the bank. Advertise with us. More details on our advertising plans. Uh, contact info at sorgatronmedia.com today. That's producer Missy you'll be talking to over there. Uh, and uh, we'll get you lined up uh, in this fun show of fire and puppetry. She is the straw that stirs the drink. She's the only thing that's keeping the lights on here, Sorg. You know right. it and I know it. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, we will be back with the big question after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Oh, are we back now? Yes. Okay. Bobby, you gelatinous landmass. All right. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You better... I resemble, I resemble those remarks. You you better come <laughs> right. Or the next time I see... It, it won't be me that beats you with an inch of your life. It will be my tag team partner and other half of the IWC... World Tag Team Champions, the Titan, Dennis Jackson. I swear to God, he could hit you so hard and you would just explode into a stain of marinara sauce. Just I don't, I don't like marinara sauce. <laughs> just ranch dressing? That. I'm sorry. I, I, I did. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me for not having the right dipping yeah, sauce. You better get it right. Did you give him the, did you give him the Maui money too, by the way? Aren't you watching, uh, you know, um, all my all my promos, or or as uh, somebody called it, exposition theater? Uh, <laughs> what? A lot, um, no, it, it, a lot of stuff got explained in that yeah, promo. Okay, that's good. That's yes. good. Um, so. Yeah, because you had a bounty on Titan's head, you know, and and, mm-hmm. I, and, 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 and then you, now you're champions with him. Well, you know, Justin Labar, you know, he talked to me earlier in the week, and he and he showed me he he. he enlightened me and mm-hmm. had me take a little bit of a broader perspective because, you know, we could take all this energy and all this effort and fighting, you know, a, a really a, a superhuman athlete like the Titan Dennis Jackson and all the the time and energy and resources and money that would go into to try and take him out. And it's like, he's a, he's an intelligent man. He you sees, a mech suit. he sees, yeah, yeah a mech suit's <laughs> going to be a significant investment. Um, he sees the big picture just like I do, just like Wardlow does. And if you think about what Labar was able to do for Wardlow, can you imagine what he could do for the Titan? There you go. He's a big intimidating guy. Mm-hmm. He's a very big intimidating guy. Um, Chris LaRusso with us, IWC Tag Team Champion. Former uh, ROH top prospect tournament participant. That's true. Two t- two time Super Indy uh, champion. That's right. Two time Super I Indy participant. I thank David Star for you, by the way. What? What? I thank David Star for you, by the way. Oh, because he attacked uh, Josh Woods. Oh, oh, <laughs> got a little retribution for you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Josh yeah. the Goods Woods. That mm-hmm. was so sad. Uh, <laughs> do you still have the the the, the crown? Yeah, yeah. Well, part of it was, um, you know, the, the the crown's retired, but that's if you notice the mask I I picked has has sort of the crown built into it. So uh, look, if anybody has ever called themselves the king, the prince, the heir apparent, anything like that, mm-hmm. well, I mean, you're naturally going to draw some comparisons to the great kings of wrestling in the past, not the tag team, although they were great too. Um, but you know. They they all went the crown route, and I wanted to to do something a little bit different, and 
and uh, so it was more of a tiara. Oh, well, the uh, the oh, the gold one. Yeah, that's what so, I'm I mean, thinking. <laughs> I, I thought of more of like a laurel wreath, but it it it's certainly with the gold gear. It looks like uh, something like if they, when Star Trek landed on those planets, you know, it was a kind of like a. The Roman kind of situation. Right? That was kind of, and, you know, that was was kind like, of what I was going yeah, for. Yeah, you were going for like... like, yeah. like the God King of Space. Uh, you know, ad- ad- of, adversary to uh, William Shatner kind of situation. Yeah, we get the, the like music the going. Okay. The, you know, the, right. the, 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 the two giant Q-tip kind of things and you know, <laughs> smack each other around. I, thought, I think I might have beat Josh Woods if I'd had one of those. There you go. So. There you go. Opportunity. Hashtag not my top prospect. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I always say. I say it on Twitter too. So there uh, I, ha- I have a new fight forever uh, <laughs> pick: <laughs> Chris Larusa and Bobby up J Town. Me and Josh. Please, Ward. if I hit him, I get stuck. <laughs> Just stuck in Jeez. limbo. Just <laughs> going back and forth. Jeez. You ever see? You ever see when like Wolverine tries to hit the blob and it just kind of never mind. Hey. Oh. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the internet. All right. Uh, I, was, I meant Josh Woods, not you. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Bring it back around. Bring it back around. All right. Well, I screwed up. I screwed up the show order. Um, and then Gary gave away the big question kind of mildly. So we're just going to swap up some segments here. And and hopefully Missy won't completely hate me for this. So Ring of Honor has been in the news last week. Um they uh, they announced to everybody's surprise that they are going to do a show at Madison Square Garden. Uh, Funny oh, thing oh. happened. <laughs> the, uh, I believe it was the Sinclair uh, CEO uh, said Joe that. Coff. Joe Coff. Oh, it was Joe Coff himself. Uh, so uh, he is. Would he be Ring of Honor CEO? No, no, I believe his uh, his uh, title is with Sinclair Broadcasting. I believe Sinclair uh, Broadcasting the King, CEO. I, 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 I the do, King of Honor. <laughs> I do, I do know that. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This, this is what I'm confusing because it was Sinclair CEO Chris Ripley that revealed the show mm-hmm. that was going to happen, mm-hmm. and I think it's probably Joe Coff that has the statement that just came out. I would assume so. Okay. Um, uh, and the the wording is that the Madison Square Garden show has been can- is off mm-hmm. due yeah. to quote a communication with WWE oh. um, from MSG, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, was well, the, their explanation? I I heard that they might have been trying to schedule MSG for WrestleMania weekend. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if M- if WWE is running the Hall of Fame in MSG again. I would I would agree with that, except that instead of the the show is off, it's not six months forward or six months you know or twelve months down the line. They have made it very clear that as of right now. Ring of Honor will not be running Madison Square Garden at in, any point in 2019. In 2019, yes, <laughs> like that. That was part of the statement that they gave mm-hmm. as their what they have heard from Madison Square Garden. So Vince said he, that they can't use his building, pretty yeah. much. Which is interesting because the same article talked about apparently AAA is going to have a show there. Yeah. Now are they having it in the theater? or are they no. having it in the arena? They're, they said that they were doing that in the arena. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is also the question I think a lot of us had when they said the Madison Square Garden. It's like, oh, are they just going to do it in a theater? Well, because a couple plays. Ring, Ring of Honor was going to be. It was a co-branded because New Japan was going to be there also. That might yeah. have actually been a bigger deal to, if they were going to do a, a New Japan show mm-hmm. at Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, or look, a co-branded. Look at what know. they're doing, like just New Japan by themselves. The the mm. the the joint tours have been selling out all over. Um, I know it was insane. The G one specials. G1 what specials? In yeah. Two weeks next. I week? don't. Uh, the specials the eighth. Okay. And even if they don't sell out, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if they'd be able to sell out the garden. They could still put up a respectable number in there. Mm. Look at all in. Uh, yeah, but all in is different. All in, all in is if, a one-time thing. It's in Chicago can, and it's a ten thousand seat arena. If it was WrestleMania from, weekend, they could sell it out. No, uh, they could. Se- the they tickets, could sell it out mm, WrestleMania weekend. The tickets for something at Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. are significantly more expensive that's the that's why wwe doesn't do the regular shows there yeah that's, just because running the mm-hmm. guard is is significantly more expensive yeah, like you have a garden yeah, up charge gotta watch if, if they sold out i gotta watch out for I, I don't think they'd be able to make their money back on it <laughs> right right like so so i mean as shitty as it is that vince kind of pulled rank 
I think in the long run, it might be financially beneficial for ROH. Mm -hmm. that they don't lose the income on that because, I mean, you can run Hammerstein two nights, like a two-night event, and yeah. still get the same kind of gate. Yeah, and they do, and they and you know they do, and 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 I think maybe it also you know they're they're probably outgrowing it. But they, I mean, I think they're selling out Hammerstein every single time. Oh yeah. So yeah. I, the the idea of moving up, they're not ready. The Barclays Center is where the the yeah. other arena in New York is not mm -hmm. correct. Is that the Barclays Center? Yeah, and I think there's uh, a couple more. WWE runs, but WWE mostly runs that's, Barclay when they yeah, run New York. That's SummerSlam usually. Uh, that's a SummerSlam weekend. That, that's that's the they, that's a, they run Raw and SmackDown after Mania there. So if you were going to yeah. jump, so, if you were going to jump from Hammerstein, but you weren't ready to do the Barclays Center, you weren't re ready to do an, uh, a major well, arena. Madison Square Garden, as far as big arenas, is relatively small. Relatively, I'm not saying it's not. You know, what, what's the seating in there? Oh yeah. No, I agree. It's only, it's only like maybe, I well, want to say 17,000. I mean, what did you say? 15? 17, 15, 17, somewhere around there. It depends on how you set it up. I was about to say, I know that the WWE, even when they um, did like WrestleMania 10, at the, they did a very conservative mm -hmm. uh, entrance and a very conservative, and they typically, you know, whenever they Usually use, they I do. think they had a SummerSlam there once where, it was a very conservative entrance. Uh, and when we saw Survivor Series, when uh, John Cena came back, uh, yeah. it, was, it was just like, you know, it was the subway car looking thing from the entrance, and that yeah. was it. And, and part of it. that is, is that if you do a, a Tron, a big setup, you, you, you know, lop of off, you lose a ton of seats. Mm -hmm. uh, According to the Wikipedia page, it says the uh, capacity is 20,789. Yeah. So, WrestleMania, yeah. WrestleMania 20. For some kind of perspective, had eighteen thousand five hundred attendance, mm -hmm. and that they, they had a big stage for that because that was at that show. Like, like a third of the arena was blocked off. So, mm -hmm. one of the few times that they did like a full entrance set, yeah, because yeah. I like a lot of them. Like the other uh, the rest, of, yeah, they're they're usually like like the entrance like the entrance way like on the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, it's like, a very short. It's a very short. Um, very like the little they had the flip open doors instead mm -hmm. of the actual trunk. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, it seems like a big jump. I mean, Ring of Honor are do, they're doing well, but like they're not coming to like a civic arena yet, right? No, um, but they're, like and it the, feels like there should be a step up towards that. And they're doing well in, you know, I, I think AE has been. I don't know if it's been sold out. I think I think the um, uh, either Global Wars or War of the Worlds. I think that came close to selling out. If if it didn't, um, um, the one last year, the the New Japan one mm -hmm. last year did. Okay, because I remember I couldn't get in there without mm -hmm. a press pass. Thank you, Matt Carlin. So, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, and I think there's a few other people we know that only got in on a press pass. So, so I mean that like they're they're doing reliably well. I don't I don't know if they sold out last. Although ironically, um, they were also running against Night of the Superstars. Mm -hmm. So and and that you know was probably. Uh, pulled some people who otherwise in the Pittsburgh area probably oh, yeah. would, have, would have stayed and gone to that because that had we had Rey Mysterio, mm -hmm. we had Jack Swagger, we had mm -hmm. like had some Rikishi, some big names up there. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in, in competition, there, with that. there was a convention that same weekend too. I think uh, Steel, Steel City, City Con, Con yeah. was running that yep. weekend. Too. So so if you're gonna have them do a jump, uh, you know what's the um, Duquesne Arena? Um, not Palumbo. 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 Yeah. That's probably the if they were going to go bigger, that's probably the most logical jump. And you saw this when TNA was trying to take their big touring on the road deal. Like they mm -hmm. they did uh, taping at IUP, mm -hmm. right? And they filled, they blocked off the entire one side, and it was um, a side, and the end mm -hmm. was full of people. Mm -hmm. So it they did well, right? Yeah. They were right at oh, a couple the... thousand people. The, yeah, but how much? How much were the tickets, though? Um, I think if, I might have gotten mine for free. It was for TV taping too. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, ROH if they ran the garden, yeah, their tickets would not be. And it's the out of the middle of nowhere. It, you know, it was for TV, so they're they're putting that money behind it too. So they need to fill the stands, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you also don't want to go too big when Ring of Honor did the convention center over um, Royal Rumble weekend a couple mm -hmm. years ago. I mean, there was uh, that may have been the most people who've seen a Ring of Honor show in Pittsburgh. I think there was over a thousand fans there, mm -hmm. but it was in a cavern of yep. a room yeah. at the convention center where just it was there was empty space in both directions all the way. They didn't you know. cordon it off. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I, how could you? I mean, well, they, I thought they, they, they have like they, partitions. They had they had pipe and drape to take off, you know, sort of where the locker room and the where the camera was shooting. Oh, really? But you but you'd have need miles of pipe and drape to. Yeah. And there was no there were no stands to block it in. It was all floor seating. Yeah. So you know, Ooh, but then but then they also ran um, Cal U. Mm-hmm. Which again, I think had like six hundred people there, mm-hmm. but it's all on the floor. You're not you using can... any of the seats on the on the in the arena. There's a basketball but, arena. For, all right. same, same thing with West Virginia when they had like that insane uh, Matt Seidel and AJ Styles. Match there was like nine hundred people there, but they yeah. did it. But they didn't in the West Banco Arena. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think they which runs SmackDown. Yeah. SmackDown has done TV there. Yeah. And... So and and they did like floor plus like one. Half Half of one side. Yeah. All right. For for comparison's sake, um, I'm looking at the the Ring of Honor show that ran during uh, WrestleMania weekend this year mm-hmm. in New Orleans, the Supercard of Honor 12. Mm-hmm. They had six thousand people in attendance at the Uno Lakefront Arena, mm-hmm. and that place holds a little under nine thousand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they should be doing all in sized arenas. Yes, in they should places be, in wrestling should, towns. Yeah, they should not be doing Madison Square Garden. No, like mm-hmm. I know that I know they feel slighted because of this. Mm-hmm. It, do, do you it, think it, New it's J- a blessing in disguise? Do you think New Japan could have could do bigger arenas on the East Coast? No, I don't think so either. Mm-hmm. Because New Japan stars were at the Supercard of Honor, like that's where we had Young Bucks. Like that was Kenny versus Cody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If that ain't a draw enough to sell out that little arena there, but man, that you're also competing with the takeovers and everything else happening WrestleMania that's weekend. If, if that's when they were going to have. Mm-hmm. If that's what, because odds are you're running a a Madison Square Garden. You're going to want to run it when you know everyone's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's either WrestleMania weekend. And I don't think SummerSlam is going back there next year. So Jason in chat room says, go back to Ross Traver. No, it's freezing. <laughs> Hell it's no. freezing. The site of Jim Cornette's mental breakdown. Yeah. Which I was actually, I had front row seats to that. Yeah. Um, I hear, I hear Joe Dombrowski did too. I, I, I think I was so terrified at the moment that he was going to like rip my, you know, rip my throat out with his teeth. I've never seen somebody turn purple. I've heard of people going red with rage. He was apoplectic. I've never seen an angrier human. I, I just, like it when when like you know when God created rage, <laughs> he gave it a Kentucky accent. Yeah, like like that is as close <laughs> to godly rage as I have ever seen with my own two eyes. Yes. They get yeah. his order wrong at Wendy's. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I believe I believe that he thought Steve Carino was dying. So, oh, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I remember just, does anybody from this dog fuck town know where the goddamn dog fuck hospital is? <laughs> so, <Jeez. laughs> uh, yeah, because that was a street fight between Carino and uh, Jay Cole Briscoe. Co- Jay Briscoe, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, that, and it was very cold and it was very mm-hmm. late. And yeah, that contributed to things going wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which I'm sure you can see on Honor Club these days. Um, but anyway, they have all the episodes <laughs> back on there. Oh boy. Um, yeah, Tina is actually saying even New Japan is uh, struggling with the Cow Palace. Uh, they're actually giving tickets away to veterans right now. Yeah, um, and that and so, that's a stack show. Oh, like yeah, that's a stack a, show. And they did very well. Cow Palace is a big building though. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So be interesting to see what they do with that. Wait, uh, um, Missy, when are you going to San Francisco? Oh, 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 wait, wait, when she's going to be there for G1 special. <gasps> Missy, go, go watch the wrestling. We, you can go see We Watch Wrestling is going to be there, too. There you go. There you go. You can meet all of our friends out there and be like, mm-hmm. hi, I represent the Wrestling Ma'am show. I'm producer Missy. There we go. What? Yes. Business Write trip. it off. There is a business trip. I told, yeah. I told, you, to, right I told you to go say hi to Uncle Leo and Pataluma as well. That was easy. Going to meet with your account. Jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, from that, hey guys. Um, jeez. Want to give a shout out to our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, pro Wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, as we've just discussed. Sometimes there's fireballs in the 
in the seats. Because sometimes there's fireballs in the sometimes car. Sometimes you catch an announcer, your announcer or, and or booker, depending on what the show was, uh, on fire in the car on the way to the show. Uh, Not a good idea. And Occupy Pro Wrestling is there with a fire extinguisher. I actually think I was fired shortly after that. <laughs> That may have been my last time I was booked in Cleveland for a while. <laughs> Anyways, Oops. Oops. Well, you can always get a job with our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling here to uh, look at what makes it fun. <laughs> Featuring articles, blogs, and podcasts that bring the interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in smart mark. Check them out at OccupyProWrestling.com. Thank you, Alex Cars and the crew over there for supporting the show all this time. Uh, so, uh, locally, there's some interesting in- stuff going on. Um, this, the, and I, I'm considering this more of a national story because I think their next show is happening in California. Uh, but Black Craft Wrestling is happening here in the city. Um, and sold out. Sold out this sold week. Out. Now, don't worry. They're on iPay-Per-View. And if you get an iPay-Per-View, which is $10, um, they're actually going to give you a gift card last I knew for $10 off in their store because Bl- Black Craft is actually a clothing line. Um, mm-hmm. so don't they have a whiskey too? I, I would not be surprised from the stuff like you've seen with it. Um, they're doing a, they're doing a thing now with Corey Taylor from Slipknot, uh, for charity. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing a run of shirts for them. So like, like these guys are a pretty significant deal. So this isn't just like an independent promotion. This is like a, you know, this is like Van's Warped Tour, you know? It, it's mm-hmm. it's the, the, the entertainment side of their clothing line mm-hmm. doing this thing. So, like, there's money behind it. There's some organization behind it. It's not, like, your typical... That makes... I know that makes indie, indie wrestling sound horrible, but, uh, but, but, but really, it is, like, a little bit more uh, going on with it. It's really interesting to see how this thing is kind of developing. And I mean, this mm-hmm. is, has, of course, Johnny Blackcraft is on it. Johnny Mundo. Um, and uh, it, it, a lot of friends of the show... Uh, that we see around the area are a part of it as well. A pretty stacked main crowd. Event. Main, main event, event is going to be a part of yeah. it. Um, some guy named Victor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, the the renaming of people has been interesting. This is no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as that is about as jarring a switch yeah. as I have. I mean, that gave me whiplash when we went from <laughs> Mister In Your Face mm-hmm. to Mister Benjamin. Victor Benjamin. Yes. Uh, well, they he related working. to Senior Benjamin. Oh, it's his nephew. Um, um, uh, 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 what is his name? Ah, Pepper Parks. Oh, Pepper he's, Parks. Not Pepper, he's, he's not Pepper Parks Butcher anymore. Butcher and the Blade is the tag team. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, oh, what's his name? Carl Ule, the former Quebec is a part of it. PCO. Yeah, yeah. Some guy named the Preacher. Um, I mean, it's it, it's pretty cool. Um, and I know some people are involved in it. Uh, I tried a lot of. Um, um, rock and roll and wrestling, probably more metal and wrestling, uh, uh, several years ago, and it's good to see that like there's another mm-hmm. take at no, it. Yeah, the, I mean, and I, it's wrestling in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I've always had that thing about. I want wrestling in the city of Pittsburgh more, and I know it's represented, but I want it represented more. We've seen what happens at Stage AE. Mm-hmm. Raw is always great. WWE is coming in town in a few weeks here. Mm-hmm. This is a wrestling town, and I think independent wrestling. Should be more in town. Absolutely. So I agree. I will preach that until it, which is really funny with Blackcraft Wrestling that I'm preaching that. But uh, but yeah. Given the venue. Given the venue. Given the characters. Mm-hmm. Given the yes. Uh, but it's a fancy venue too. Yeah, yeah I noticed the that. Priory. It, I mean, it was, it's a really fancy I venue. Mean, yeah. pe- people have their wedding receptions there. Yes. It's they like have a, their weddings there. Yeah. It's like yeah. that's like one of the most expensive wedding venues in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. So. and they're sold out. Hey, the standing room only tickets were forty bucks, so that gives you an idea of uh, how that worked. And I think if you got like VIP, you got like a T-shirt and stuff. And too. I think any, so. anything that you know draws attention to local talent, draws mm-hmm. attention to to you know, is obviously good. So I intend to, um, since since they're sold out, <laughs> I intend to uh, uh, check out the stream because like, I want to see how this this goes. You know, I want to see what these guys are kind of uh, have an idea because it, it, it definitely, I definitely get the impression they have a very unique um, perspective on how they want to do pro wrestling here. Mm-hmm. You know, based on everything else I've seen around uh, Blackcraft Wrestling, join the cult is their tagline. I mean, now, not to you know, I, not to play devil's advocate, but obviously I'm going to. That goes, uh, with, that goes with this too. Um, there's <laughs> a uh, sometimes when people go outside the box, it goes incredibly well. It goes, you know, beyond Lucha Underground, 
you know, I, I'd even argue Kaiju Big Battle, anything yeah. that's mm-hmm. been, which is also coming to Pittsburgh yeah. here. Yep. God, that weeks. night is, the, you have Kaiju, RWA, and Rise all in one night here wow. in Pittsburgh. Wow. That's, that is crazy. Which is, makes me sad because I want to miss Kaiju once again. Um, but, you know, and there are times when you go out, you know, way outside the box and it's great. Mm-hmm. And then there's been some other times where, you know, you go way outside the box and it just, for whatever reason, you know, not because of, uh, not because of management, not because of talent, not because of just the, you know, the fans don't see the same vision. I think, wasn't that the urban championship wrestling that tried to have, was that, uh, was a, was that facade, was, facade was, was part facade of that. They were doing part pay-per-views of and mm-hmm. it was, it was like a gang wrestling kind of situation. It was, was right? kind of the vibe they were going for. And yeah. I mean, it was clear that there was, somebody had m- put money behind this and somebody had, but it just never took off. I remember the commercial had someone getting tased and, and someone getting jumped in an alleyway. And, you know, it, it for whatever reason, it didn't work. But, you know, uh, on, by the same token, there's no reason that uh, the uh, telenovela slash, you know, horror film slash Lucha Libre drama I mean, when, when when you saw the, um, I found a little bit of footage of the Urban Wrestling Federation. It's got like, it's got, it's got, you know, a lot of like Ricky Reyes is a part of it mm-hmm. uh, from this. So yeah, there's clearly X talented have, people that oh, were yeah. associated with it. Um, Didn't Wrestling Society X have piranhas? Yes, they yes, did. Uh, that, that's yes, another they one did. that that you know, and that was well ahead of its time. That was clear. I, I think I think that was well a precursor ahead. to what we have with Lucha Underground. I think we've had that conversation yeah. with mm-hmm. Joseph. Mm-hmm. So, and just for whatever reason, they were like, "Nah, not, you know, we're not feeling this right now." Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 fan base wasn't there. Fast forward, you know, ten years, or I don't even know, maybe closer to twenty. Um, and Lucha Underground is the talk of the wrestling world. Mm-hmm. And and Lucha has because I remember it was one of those where it was edited with that sort of reality show quick cuts nothing's connected mm-hmm. you know kind of feel to it um, and now that's exactly what they do with Lucha I mean look at all, all the reality show people behind that mm-hmm. you know um, mm-hmm. and it works out really well or you know other things like uh, I think it also helps the venue you're presenting it on too because yes. Lucha's, Lucha's being presented on El Rey where they show like kung fu marathons all the time. W, um, that that other show was on MTV, like in the middle of TRL and the real. World. Well, and they try to connect it by having um, the true bands, life. like 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 singers and stuff, announce and yeah. and perform, and that would like did the music connection, but it didn't play, you know. That's, versus that's like the, that's like the Rock saying, "Welcome to the XFL." Do you, do you think <laughs> they were thinking? Oh, I'm serious, like that yeah. that was one of the reasons, yeah. That was one of the main reasons the XFL failed so much was mm-hmm. because they did try to loop in as like they tried to stay true to the parent company as opposed to just being their own thing. Which it seems like when they're with the reboot of the XFL, they're trying to get as far away from wrestling as oh, absolutely. possible. Absolutely. What are you saying, Larry? Do you think they were looking at a celebrity death match and stuff like that? Because that was on before. Uh, yeah. 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 Because that was, I mean, well, uh, uh, Sunday Night Heat started on MTV. So actually, oh, there really? was, actually, there was no, a connection. Be, there was a, the mm-hmm. MTV and Stone MTV Boston versus Vince McMahon was on Celebrity Deathmatch. Mm-hmm. But um, MTV oh, and oh, WWE oh. have always had sort of a on again, off again relationship. Yep. I mean, in the 80s, it was it, hot. Then it went cold for a minute. The, the, uh, the original, uh, uh, was it War to Settle the Score with Cindy Lauper and mm-hmm. Piper yeah, and Hogan so happened on MTV. <laughs> And then, it's all under the Viacom family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you, they, you know, um, back in the, you know, height of the, the Monday Night Wars, um, they got back and went, when wrestling was hot and wrestling was, you know, uh, cutting edge, mm-hmm. they're back on MTV. And um, I, I remember like they had um, uh, Triple H or, or something to do like his top 10 favorite music videos. He had these these weird little shows where they had wrestlers, you know, do countdowns and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's it wasn't unheard of to to give something like Wrestling Society X a try. It just wasn't, you know, they they just didn't bite. Mm-hmm. It happens. It, wasn't that also the time where before Impact, where everyone was trying to be the alternative, mm-hmm. and WWE was 
just a juggernaut. Yeah, there was point. there was a bit of a power vacuum with WCW gone. I mean, that's when you ECW know, around, gone and ECW gone. So you got like XPW was it was given a shot, and there was other things like that. I think that's where WSX really landed too. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was kind of in that like proto Ring of Honor era, era too, mm-hmm. where they were kind of starting something. Yeah, um, it, it was before WWE kind of oversaturated themselves and had people like diving for an alternative whatever the alternative would be like if they came out three years after that they probably would have had the success tna had at least well you know uh speaking of weird um stuff that works sometimes uh joey janela is a uh, very very popular with his spring break uh mm-hmm. around wrestlemania and i know riz is very excited about this because apparently joey, joey janela is <laughs> lost in new york is coming uh august 17th that is SummerSlam weekend in new york city mm. Mm. So, um, well, I mean, if you want to talk about something weird that you didn't think would work, I think this was last WrestleMania weekend. Uh, didn't Matt Riddle have his blood sport show where they had no ropes? Really? I think that <laughs> was that was WrestleMania weekend where Riddle uh, ran a show, and the gimmick was no ropes. So you had to have your and matches. they book facade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost sure actually Minoru Suzuki was was oh, on geez. that was on that show. Oh god. Um, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> well, did I, uh, real quick I was were we running the show when we had the pictures of Minoru Suzuki just uh having a a battle in the rain? Oh no, we did not. I wanted to bring this back around. So tell us what happened. Minoru Suzuki had 30 a- year anniversary show. Minoru Suzuki 30 years in the business. Um, you know, obviously not just a, a, a an amazing trendsetter, somebody who's still delivering amazing matches today, still killing, still the, one of the most terrifying humans on the planet Earth. Um, he had a show. It was an outdoor show, uh, and yeah. the main event the, the was... The title on West Spandex is Celebrating 30 Terrifying Years of Minoru Suzuki. And um, it was an outdoor show, and during the main event, a rainstorm, oh, the, the skies opened up, and uh, Okada and Suzuki <laughs> had a battle in the middle of a torrential downpour. And when you say wrestling's not real. And that <laughs> like I, I saw You the say fo- Street Fighter's not real. Yeah. Like the Jeez. photos look like the, the final stage of Tekken, where <laughs> the, where they're just um and, and there's a picture, and I know that um I showed it earlier on Instagram, I'm not sure if it's on this, uh, on this article, but you, there's a shot where Suzuki cracks, um, Okada in the jaw and you see not only his skin move, but you see the water fly off of his head and yeah, he's doing the rainmaker pose in the middle of a downpour. Um, just, just really, 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 really cool stuff. And by the way, that canvas is slick as anything uh, when it gets wet. So he's giving pile drivers, and um, Okada goes up for that. Wait, wait, go back. Is he smiling? <laughs> Which one? That group photo. Oh yeah, he's smiling. Oh yeah, that's he's terrifying. All kinds of smiling because he has he has like he has some champagne in his hand. He's a uh, uh, Suzuki's having a good time. This is good time Suzuki happening right here, guys. Suzuki smiling. Oh yeah. Than when and what, normal. Also, hey, it's being a street fighter. Like the like Balrog's there too with the, with the gloves on the right as well. <laughs> Uh, hanging out. Is this uh, is this online? Like the match? Um, I don't know if the match is on. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I, can't, probably, I can't find it on New Japan. It's probably Gold. gonna be. It's not. On, it's not on New Japan yeah, Gold. Not, I don't think it's a New Japan thing, is it? No. I I'm, I mean, New Japan obviously. I think blessed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that's, wait, a minute, that's a G1 symbol on the mat. They might so have been a sponsor. Maybe they were a sponsor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, yeah, just a uh. Some of the photos, uh, if you go on Instagram or if you go on any of the thing, you know, just, just amazing. Um, one one of the most uh, intense, terrifying, entertaining, uh, you know, performers of of all time. Obviously, uh, a, a legend, a living legend, and thirty years in, he's still going strong. Still, yeah. still, yeah. And uh, scarier than ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, re- I remember meeting him at the because he was at the at the War of the Worlds show. And he just has this presence, like if I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. Like <laughs> you, it, it, I am allowing you to shake my hand. I am allowing you to be in my presence. 
And but if if I decide that I don't want you in my presence, it, it's it's going to be over, and no one's going to be able to stop me. And that's one of the other things. <laughs> like like if Suzuki wanted to kill you, who's going to stop him? Like who 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 in the locker room is going to be able to pull Suzuki off of you? Maybe Ishii. <laughs> Uh, Maybe with he's the head. got a he's got a match with him. He's not going to pull him off anyone. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to fight him in two weeks or next week. That is true. Jeez, how has your new Japan World experience been going, Larry? Good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really watched much of anything this week, but uh, but you're uh, ready for the G1. I'm ready for the G1. I, I was watching Kazuno. Uh, Stay hydrated. Road Stay hydrated. Earlier last week, I have my. Uh, I think that. Um, uh, Kota Bushi's win in this year. So maybe. That, well, that means Omega and Ibushi at Tokyo Dome. See, I, I Golden Lovers explode. Oh no! I, I, I mean, could see Omega winning it. You could see the him the champ winning the G one. Yeah. Yes. That would be rare, but it's not. A, I mean. Yeah, but I I feel like Kenny Omega would be the guy to do it because then he gets to pick who he wants to face, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's I think I don't, we'll pick Okada. I kind of I kind of feel like no, Cody's going to sneak one out and win next week. Hmm. <laughs> Cuz they could do a lot with that feud still, mm-hmm. you know. And if he just pins them out right, where are they going to go with it? I mean, they could go to Kota Ibushi and they get, Kenny, I mean, they could do a lot. Of, hey, I got your number. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it, and Cody, Cody would just go yeah. to town on something like that. I could see Ibushi would have didn't challenge him. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure he That'd would challenge him immediately, but mm-hmm. it's too much wrestling. I bet yeah, Ibushi see, Bushi seems like the easy pick to me, and like the I don't follow New pick. Japan yeah. all that much, but from what I do, it seems like they like Ibushi is the WWE pick, like. If you're going traditional WWE storyline, Kota mm-hmm. is the easy winner. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're doing that because it doesn't seem like they've done it in the past. And he's kind of been in the background the last year mm-hmm. or so. You know, I mean, he hasn't like had any real successful like. Not that he hasn't been winning matches, but like big, he hasn't had any really big feuds or huge title opportunities or anything like that. And G one would be a good uh, way to change that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. There's your new Japan watch for this week. Also, some of us will sometime get time to watch the UK tournament. Uh, I watched the semifinals I, I and they were pretty amazing. Uh, general, I did. general, I for any of us that didn't get, I mean, it was at 3 p.m. day of this show. So, and I know the first one was like two and a half hours. So, my WWE app expired on <laughs> Sunday. Oh, so. no. Don't you want I, some fine British nope, wrestling? Nope. Jack I'm, Gallagher being Jack Gallagher I'm again? I'm happy my, with my 999 going Surprise to 999 returns. yen. Jeez. Probably don't spoil anything. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna watch it. I haven't heard anything yet. Uh it's, it's good. It, I, I've only I've only heard one thing and it makes me very happy. Mm-hmm. Even though I even though I was angry that it was spoiled for me. Bad Mike. I'll renew it during the next takeover. Well they kinda of spoiled that on the Bad website, Mike, anyway. Bobby and I will be watching with anticipation for your live tweet of the uh three three way to the grave tomorrow. So, so I guess you'll be ready to to do a live mayhem underground after the show. Then, um, no. actually, um, tomorrow I'll be talking with the Bora Madova at 10 p.m. So, well, I mean, we might be able to do something after that. Actually, that since I'll be here me, in the studio. You know me; I don't sleep. So that's that true. That's true. Neither do I, and it's starting to catch up. Um, but if, well, you know, while you're having trouble sleeping and you need a, uh, uh, you know, something to, you know, fill that time, you can go that's over the. Why Indian- I draw. It's just, no, 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 no. That'll help. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me roll back. Let me roll back out of the ad. Yeah. Did anybody yeah. see the tweet where JR says, I was trying to cure my insomnia, so I watched Raw last night? Actually, it, it, I, I saw that. It does kind of work. <laughs> yes. Oh, JR does not give a shit anymore. Uh, but, anyways, also, it sounds like Kane, yeah, Kane one, came back on SmackDown more. tonight. Yeah, uh, the return of Team Hell No is probably going to be against the Blood and Brothers for the tag titles. <gasps> yeah. Because. Because they are keeping Miz and Brian as far away as humanly oh. possible. They confirmed that it is for the tag team titles. Jeez. Isn't he running for mayor? St- like, he has an election to do. He shouldn't be on TV. That's why you he's doing tag really- That's why he's he doing tag That Nobody shows you how complicated the county of Knoxville, Tennessee is. It is the only Extreme Rules match that's going to be on Extreme Rules, Bailey versus Sasha. What? 
I'm I'm assuming that's where we're going with this. That could be. That could be. Because we'll as of right out. now, AJ versus Rusev is not Extreme Rules. <gasps> they haven't announced then, anything yet. I, but something should oh be Oh, my announced. God. It's, I want to see AJ really versus cool. Rusev in a Kenny Chesney street fight. Kenny <laughs> <laughs> Chesney street fight? Well, I mean, we don't have, like, Brooklyn brawls. That's the equivalent in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. It would be a slice on Broadway street fight. Mm. Come on. Come on. I'm surprised a sponsor hasn't actually sponsored a street fight or or, or, or a death match or something like that. They, there's got to be somebody out there who throws. Oh, you've heard my throw. ladder idea, right? No, what's this? Uh, mm-hmm. If you have a ladder match, you should have it sponsored by a local hardware store and any indie wrestling. The true, the true ladder. value ladder match. True value ladder match. I but mean, don't you think that, that 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 you know the shattered ladders is not a good visual for the quality? Of, uh, shattered ladders. Uh, I mean, would not well, buy that ladder. Yeah, I mean, I would not buy a ladder. <laughs> shattered ladder is my improv group name. What's the big question? <laughs> oh, we've already done the big question. Oh, good. No, no, this is an ad where I can tell everybody go oh. look up Chris LaRusso on IndieWrestling.us. Well, you have your entire IWC career up there. Absolutely, that's right. My, uh, your, your your fuse with Andrew Palace. Best of three series with John McChesney. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cage match with Andrew Palace. Um, the. Uh, the match against uh, Sam Adonis, Shane Douglas. Sam Adonis coming back here. Coming back uh, in July. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. I think we have a random RWA match with I, you, too. I, I believe that there's not. Yeah, I was in RWA for a second. Yeah, I had, I had a cup of coffee down there. Yeah. Um, there was a, that four way scramble with. Uh, oh, let's give a, a, a quick uh, congratulations to DJ Z. Battle, of, yeah. Battle of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in one week, he loses the tag belts, but gets into Battle of Los Angeles so, at P- I mean, PWG. Congratulations to uh, to DJZ on that. David Starr also, um, mm-hmm. Battle of Los Angeles. Um, and uh, Jeff Cobb. So a couple couple people who made a... Yeah. Who were at IWC recently? Joey Janela too, I think, right? Janelle. Is Janela in? I, 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 think, I, I, I think I think I saw his name. Yeah. Jeff Cobb is challenging for the never open weight title next week. Ooh. Talk about and that and we were talking about terrifying people. Jeff Cobb, nicest guy in the world. Holy God, is he terrifying? Jeff Cobb likes yeah. turtle puppets. Yeah, well, <laughs> he likes turtle puppets. He does confirm. I mean, yeah, but he, what he did to Star in that match was just like, mm-hmm. like, yep, no, no, that, like. <laughs> shouldn't be that easy it's weird it, it's like it, it just messes with me that like somebody that happy is under that mask in lucha underground well that might be why the mask mm-hmm. was there you know yeah it's just like, he's, he's smiling the entire time yeah just, oh yeah oh he's having a good time mm-hmm. he's having a great he, time he's actually telling jokes as he delivers wrath of the gods <laughs> <laughs> or the tour of the islands for those of you who know better from without the mask tour of the islands, tour of the the islands. islands. there you go yeah. oh boy um, can I plug something real quick? Just you can if, plug stuff. IndieWrestling.us. Okay. Go check it out. All the shows. Rise Wrestling, IWC, RWA, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling, which you're also involved in and, up there. And with a segue into that, allow me to give my schedule for the next month. All right. Yes. June 30th, Premier Championship Wrestling in Cleveland, Ohio at uh, Famous Turner's Hall. July 1st, Black Diamond Wrestling in Bedwood, West Virginia. July 7th, uh, RSW in Fairmont, West Virginia. Uh, July 8th, Premier Championship Wrestling in Sandusky, Ohio. July 14th, IWC, a Threat Level Midnight Part D. Uh, in Elizabeth, PA. Um, July 20th, RSW in Brook Park, Ohio. July 22nd, Dropkick Diabetes, Libson, Ohio. July 28th, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling, Cleveland, Ohio, at uh, Famous Turner's Hall. July 29th, uh, a company making its debut, Revenge Pro Wrestling, up in Erie, PA. And I'm running out of breath, so the rest of it will... Did you get that booking for the Gathering of the Juggalos on July 21st yet? I did not, but I'm looking no? at it. But, the, but I, there might, July 21st might get uh, something coming up oh, here, man. here very shortly. I'm not going to see you at the Gathering? No. I, well, you know, I'd love to do one of those shows. I'd love mm. to do one of those Gathering shows. I've heard amazing story about... About how well the boys are taken care of, um, I I, I, uh, I do know who I think would be great for gathering of the Juggalos, Officer Dan Murphy. Oh geez, yes. And, <laughs> well, you know what Cole Cabana does there, well, Officer Officer Cole, Officer Colt, Officer Cole Cabana. Oh, they hate him. But if you like, did Officer they... Dan and the gavel David Lawless, oh, if, if you brought those Jeez. two to the gathering of the Juggalos, they wouldn't leave the ring alive. No, 
No. I mean, I, wrestling fans love Colt Cabana. Mm-hmm. Juggalos will murder Officer Colt Cabana. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it's great. It, it, it's, it's great. Yeah. But I, I, I would love to see those guys get a chance to go. I mean, I don't... I, Obviously, love to I, I, amazing shows. They, I mean, wasn't there one that happened at like four in the morning? And one they of the usually gatherings? they they start at one. Okay. And I believe Tommy Dreamer. I didn't even stick around. Tommy Dreamer was taking on somebody, and it was at like the sun was coming up by the time they got to it. Wow. Not very well because you gotta understand they do the concerts, mm-hmm. and then they have to wait for ICP to get there. If Shaggy's doing like the commentary or something, uh-huh. he's not the most punctual. Trying to figure or out probably doing. sober. I mean, it's at least some of the best commentary. I mean, oh yeah, oh yeah, you get a live commentary with that. I think they're doing a Battle of the Sexes show. They're doing a, their their usual bloody mania shows. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing an oddball show. I saw Kaiju Big Battle there one time, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a good time. Like it's a uh, it, it's it's the music, it's the wrestling, it's you know a little bit of everything. So mm-hmm. uh, I plan to be there since this is going to be the final one, unfortunately. So uh, mm-hmm. gotta gotta go out with a bang. The final gathering. Final gathering. Bobby, this is your last yeah. chance for me to uh, hook, get you hooked up with a uh, Juggalo girl. That's, that's quite all right. I think I think it'll Sorg, change your world. I, Sorg, I believe they prefer the top proper term Juggalette. They do. They do. Juggalette. They do. <laughs> yes, a Juggalette. But anyways, <laughs> uh, and uh, well, shout out to the old Western PA Juggalos crew. They just did a Juggalo Day at Kennywood this weekend. Good to see that's still happening. I love it. Um, roots of this show with uh, that site. So, uh, like I said, I mentioned the Bora Madova. That'll be t- 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday the 27th. We'll be doing that live over on the Indie Wrestling US uh, Facebook page. Um, he wanted to talk wrestling with people that aren't shitty about wrestling. Was the tweet, I believe. <laughs> so uh, we're like, hey, let's talk about wrestling over here, and I, we we got that lined up. So um, also, uh, we are on the Mayhem show next week is Marcus Mann. We'll be talking about John oh, Cena. Boo. We... <laughs> We're gonna be talking is John about... Cena still a thing? What's that? No, for Marcus Mann, John Cena is always a thing. He's, mm-hmm. like, he's, uh... he's, he's, he's so, sword, you should get him stuff? to enter for the blockers poster. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to get yeah. it. I got to get it auctioned off before um, before he gets here. Um, or else he'll take it. Uh, but also, I understand there's going to be a special announcement on the show about something new coming to the Pittsburgh area that uh, Marcus Mann is involved in. I have no idea what this is. No, <laughs> you I'm, ter- the- I'm terrified. T- <laughs> it might involve you. No, no, no Marcus. It don't- might. It oh, might involve you. I don't Lord. know. I could see how you could fit into this. Uh, well, so you know what it is, and I don't know what it is. I've heard rumors. It's a John Cena. Heard, you can't see me. I've fan only <laughs> yes. And welcome to the John Cena. You can't see this promotion. I'm out of here. Dude. Uh, <laughs> it's all is it, is it, just walk to your you guest. Are you sure it's not just a John Cena pierogi at PNC? Oh, that'd be good too. <laughs> that'd be all right too. Um, also, if John Cena threw out the first pitch at a Pirates game, I think Marcus would just spontaneously he'd just rip in half. <laughs> he's just done. <laughs> he's just done. Um, they wouldn't put that kind of money out to get John Cena to a Pirates game. Hell, this year they might let him pitch. It's a puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> um and also uh the week after that on the 10th uh, it is not a puppet show todd george with, <laughs> with phil singer games will be joining us on the show um in, in advance of the iwc show where phil singer will be representing as well as galacticon will be happening that weekend uh in elizabeth pa mm-hmm. uh so a lot of fun happening on here um and uh we'll be getting some more interviews lined up as well and check out everything else going on of course a great i believe you were part of the stomp out cancer show this past weekend Absolutely it's in the editing fantastic. bay it, that, we'll that's, to it. that's uh indie wrestling.us as well right that's right you can All pre-order right. it right yeah. now on dvd and digital download and get last year's show on both uh digital download and dvd hell of a show it was it was great to see so many uh mm-hmm. uh so many cross promotional matches it was great to see so many people come together some matches you normally don't get to see some matchups you normally don't get to see uh, a couple debuts for um, mm. some some new talent in the area, so um, and I think they almost doubled what they made last year. I, I don't yeah, I don't want to I, I don't want to speak as fit on a, any official capacity. The but, term I heard was they killed it compared to next year. Okay, last year. so yes. Yes. Um, but I mean, uh, fantastic show, uh, fantastic matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, hope. I, I hope to get it edited by the weekend. 
That's the cross of my fingers. I'm sorry I gave you junk at the fucking... Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry I gave you junk at the last IWC show about how quickly it takes you to edit the shows. You do a fantastic job, <laughs> Sorg. You, you, you should feel very proud of yourself. Pixelate you're, his face on the next one. You're a, yeah, ve- yeah. You're a very pretty man. You oh, do really good work. Guess whose entrance is getting cut. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh the footage was lost oh, oh did, no uh, oh uh, no uh, 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 rent rendering issues I, uh i realize i've only deleted three matches ever that i've never made it to to tape who were they to release like who were they we'll tell you after the show <laughs> uh no i know what one of them is you know what one of them was a th- it was at a it, uh, hold on. We'll what? just talk about that after the show. Chris, okay, Chris Larusso, <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Um, okay, I learned. Uh, I'll do one kind of you know uh, laid back, but one serious. Uh, I learned that uh, you never know who's going to walk through the doors of the uh, IWC training school. And I will leave that kind of ambiguous mm. uh, and, and mysterious. And the other thing I learned is that um, that hard work does pay off. And I want to give a quick shout out. I can't again. I can't be too forward until uh, a later date. But I want to give a big shout out and uh, wish the best of luck to Wardlow. Uh, it's got a big week coming up uh, ahead. Uh, this guy who has been working his ass off is in the best shape of his life. Looks like a million bucks. Mm. Uh, it, it, it hopefully, it, should be turning some heads. And one of the nice guys in wrestling. Yeah, and, and, I, it, and, the, I, and I, the nice guys ru- always seem to be the ones that make it. Hate, so. hate, to, hate to ruin his uh, his his reputation, um, but you know he's uh, he he's been working his ass off. Mm. He he's got a great opportunity uh, coming up ahead, and I think that. It, can't think uh, that there's any way he doesn't knock it out of the park. Um, and all of Pittsburgh is is behind him, and uh, best of luck. There you go. There you go. Good luck to him. Uh, of course, we die. if you don't know who Ward, though, is, if you're from a different area, the, we do have an interview with him from uh, probably about a year ago on Indie mm-hmm. Wrestling, or, uh, Indie Wrestling US and um, uh, uh, Indie Mayhem show, so you can look that up as well. Larry, what would you learn from New Japan? Um... <laughs> I learned that Juice Robinson's a star-spangled unicorn. <laughs> All right. That's what I learned. I didn't watch much right. wrestling this week. I learned that you make <laughs> friends when you wear your Lucha Underground t-shirt into a Walgreens in Lincoln, Nebraska. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Walk it in. I was getting a, a power adapter because I thought I, I did not think that that would be their hotbed. No, no, I don't know if it's a hotbed, but because there, it was uh hell, I didn't know they had television in Lincoln, oh, Nebraska. Luke, there so. you go. Uh, uh, the the fellow behind the counter was excited to see the Lucha uh, shirt. Um, I, I, he says he knows Thunder Rosa, uh, Cobra Moon. Um, I, although I think via Facebook. Uh, but uh, I, so if you're listening, hi. I, I I just that's the impression I got. Uh, you can clarify with me because I did ask you to check the show out. Uh, but uh, yeah, he was he was actually looking for um, some training like opportunities and uh but of course doesn't seth rollins have a school out there in like or? iowa iowa yeah. well, it's like, like right next door it's like five listen, minute drive this is a, here's what right I, next door in the midwest it's like, I mean, it's like the next cornfield well, over you know what it's really funny i thought nebraska was further west it's actually right in the center of the country did you know that no no like directly nope. in the center right, of the country. the country no once you're past indiana yeah. once you're past indiana it I gets all mushy yeah yeah, yeah right. it is it's ridiculous. It is kind of you know, it's called the heartland. This country's a lot bigger than I thought it was. It goes yeah. St. Louis, Colorado, California. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. There's That's like the, it. there's the Rocky Mountains well, are in there somewhere, and and Vegas, and Vegas, Vegas is That's in Colorado. The important part. Nope, no. Nope. I thought Vegas nope. was in California. Nope, nope, it's nope. definitely not. Arizona. I learned a lot. You learn a lot when you hang out in like Kansas and Nebraska and Peoria, Illinois. Well, yeah. What else is there to do but learn? <laughs> Sit around and watch the cars rust. I mean, wow. stare wow. into your own navel. I, mean, I will notice. Like, there's only. I mean, Brandon. I think is the only one from the from the middle America. Not the because the middle. That is okay. Welcome to the geography the mayhem show of America. Sir. Mad Mike, That's please save this segment life. and tell me what you learned from wrestling this week. I learned that if you're going to spend um, two plus hours on a Monday night watching something. And you have a choice between last night's Monday Night Raw and the sequel of The Incredibles. <laughs> you see the sequel of The Incredibles. How were you with that uh, that that intro bit? 
the uh, the short I, at the beginning. Every I loved everything about it, Sorg. Yeah, I loved every single bit about the Incredibles, the short beforehand. No, so the, you saw. Just to clarify, you saw the Incredibles. You didn't miss the Incredibles for Raw, right? I no, no, I missed Raw for the Incredibles. Okay, okay. I missed Raw for the Incredibles. Watch then the main event. Home, then when I came home, I watched Raw, and I was like, oh, God, I'd rather be watching The Incredibles again. Mm. Main event was good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, Bobby F.J. Town, what'd you learn? I learned the Riot Squad needs to be stopped. <laughs> They're they hooligans! Go around. Like, hooligans! They, they go around. I wanted, although, I wanted them to, to, to mark Kinder Mahal. <laughs> but, 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 Bobby. They didn't uh, do it. Bobby, that's like saying we need a structured format. Like, yeah. if, if they were stopped, then they wouldn't be called a riot squad. That's true. And, and, and why is Ginger doing the, the namaste thing again? Because people are trying to hinder him again. Okay. Nice that's callback. All nice callback. That's all right. All and from the chat room, uh, Dave Podner learned who's been joining me on the Raw wrap-up uh, every so often, him and Tina. Uh, I has learned that pancakes blended with milk is an energy drink, at least for uh, Xavier Woods. Um, I'm pretty sure they served that at Colin Delaney's shop up in uh, Rochester. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Wait, energy drink I, killed him tonight. I thought that was why I hopped their name from a B to a P. Mm. Or, to, to not compete with Colin Delaney? Wait, so yep. what, is Colin, what is Colin Delaney's shop? Pop Rock? You haven't heard about this? No. no he's got, I'm going he, to Rochester next year. I, 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 oh, God. Pop Rock? I, um, I think, hold on. I'm going to, and my phone, of course, died. He's got a shop. I think it's Rochester, New York. If I, Colin, if, if I screw that up, I'm sorry. Um, but it's comic books, coffee, and cereal. <laughs> really? Oh, cool. That's cool. And so what you can do is you can come in the morning. You can grab, there's like a, there's like a bar. But instead of you know me getting a Jameson oh and ginger God, ale, here it is. you can get Lucky uh, Charms. You, Pro no, Wrestlers opening shop that focuses on comic cereal and caffeine. So, but here's the thing: like, it's not just hmm. like a bowl of cereal. You can get a bowl of cereal where it's like uh, cookie crisps and cookie and uh, cocoa puffs and chocolate syrup wow. with chocolate milk. So it's like cereal cocktails. So it's like they turned it, it turned like ice cream. Dollar for yes. three months sort. So that was a good deal. You can deal. customize it. Yes. <laughs> and um there's like um co- <laughs> but yeah, it's got comic books, it's got all kinds of uh yeah, Rochester. Okay, good. I, didn't I am know, right. completely going to this next year when I head up there. No, and uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, there's no, like that's, that's dangerous. That's more dangerous than Lego matches. Captain Crunch like that? No. But uh, but yeah, that's not it, more dangerous. Cut your mouth with shards of Captain Crunch. But no, I, I I've heard all kinds of stuff where um, it's got coffee. It's got all kinds of uh, and they make like cereal milkshakes. Um, it's really cool. So that's great. <laughs> that's great. Because that looks town, like, that looks fun. I could not find anything to do in that town <laughs> when I was there two years ago. So looking forward to that. Um, awesome. Pop Rock, go check it out in, in Rochester. If you ever find yourself in Rochester, I'm sorry if you do. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a really bad time in Rochester. Like well, now you got, some, hey, now there's now I got something to do. I'll yeah. be like, Colin, what's up? Yeah. Like, do the podcast from there. So. There you go. There you go. Hey, I don't think he's been on. There you go. Has he? Don't ask me. I don't know. I, I know. Sorry, You're the I'm person that I'm Sorry, they also offer comics for free who pay $20 a month. They have a subscription. So, wow. I guess. That's awesome. All right. On that note, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chris LaRusso. Chris LaRusso on your Twitters and your social media in general. Mm-hmm. Thank Especially, you, everybody. Uh, in the Twitter, chat. Facebook, and Instagram. So. That's right. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody what they learned. I don't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Alex Miller learned that uh, Cuerno doesn't care about life. And Roman Reigns Reigns is the Christian from 2011, 2012 because he went. He won't stop bitching and moaning for a title shot after title shot. Oh, my God. There you go. There you go. What? What's that? Well, you don't have a microphone. What'd you learn in wrestling? I do it. Where's wow, the dice? Cool. I can throw it in this. Hold on. Is that the- oh, oh, geez. <laughs> that hit the microphone. That definitely hit the microphone. Well, I'm not paying for that. I am not paying for and that. And then everything <laughs> fell apart. Oh, Missy learned that we passed 2,000 followers on Twitter tonight. Yay! Thank you, everybody. No, I don't know. That's a text I saw. <laughs>
It's the last test. Go to the Google. You have too many apps. That's your problem. Wait, 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 I swear nothing. It says move along, please. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, here it is. Here it is. This is from like an hour ago. What I learned from wrestling, chops can be used as valid form of fire control. (laughs) Thank you for that story. Yeah, that just makes sense. (laughs) It does. They teach that to all volunteer fire department members in parts unknown. To just beat the shit out of the fire. That's, That's right. Yeah. Beat up the fire. It also works if you burn your turkey on Thanksgiving. The turkey. And that is it for the mayhem. Thank you, everybody, joining us in the chat room. A hot night in the chat room as well. And before we say mayhem out, I think we have some final words from a friend in Johnstown. The Curtis Hortis of Sabaro. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.